You know, I was born in Salisbury and uh, moved here. I, you know, I was a year or two old to Easton and uh, went to Saints Peter and Paul for 12 years. Uh, back in the days when you know discipline was discipline, you had nuns, yeah, yeah. and um, I might still have an indentation in my head from the ring. Yeah. You know, the the education I think was a good one. Uh, there are those who probably would say it might not have been as good, but I I learned uh, more about respect and and treating people correctly and yeah. and that that's worth more than any uh, yeah. college degree you could ever get. I, I started off worked at the Robert Morris Inn uh, when I was 17, 18. I uh, used to work at Doc's Quick Shop. Um, moved down to Salisbury, worked at a place called the Royal Exchange Pub as a bartender. Managed another restaurant for uh, for that guy. Moved to Ocean Pines. Uh, worked a couple places there. Uh, Ocean City for a while. Came back here in '79 when my dad passed away, and uh, went to work again for Docs uh, on Washington Street. Ran their deli for him, and they did subs and you know sandwiches and all that kind of stuff. Was a part owner of the Chambers Restaurant uh, in the original back in '81, uh, with Will Howard, Hank Duncan, Roy Cowdery, Michael Feely. Um, I was uh, Hank Duncan was a manager. I was assistant manager, uh, and then basically got a job as a food broker where I was a manufacturer's rep kind of thing, assigned to uh, one of the big food delivery companies, and uh, basically went out to restaurants every day and tried to sell my products, but may, most of the time helped them improve their restaurant in general, because there's a lot of people in the food business that shouldn't be. Yeah. You know, they're, they're everywhere. And, uh, <laughs> I had been talking to, to the, George, the former owner here, and I used to come in as, as a salesman and bring in products and give his customers treats and things like that. And I kept saying, why don't you buy it? Why don't you buy it? So I got, a, I got a decent severance package. And after I sat for a couple, three months, my wife's like, your butt's got to get a job. Because I'm not going to work every day and have you sitting around a house and you're not doing all the laundry or all the cleaning. You know, so. so, you know, we worked out the numbers and here we are. Started in 96 96. as the Chesapeake Bagel Bakery. Okay. And then uh, George bought it from the original owners. He had this one. There was also one in Salisbury. And uh, somewhere early 2000s or so, he sold Salisbury, kept this one. And uh, I bought it and, and trying to think of a name, you know, I, I didn't want to keep it quite the same. So I went with Joe's Bagel Cafe and I still got people at Joe's Bagel Bakery. I mean, I, I sponsored a soccer team last year and they put Joe's Bagel Bakery on the, on the shirts. They got me new ones, but, you know. <laughs> So it, yeah, it's a hard thing to lose because there's been people that have been coming here yeah. since the 90s. I mean, kids that have grown up coming here yeah. that still come here. Yeah. They're in college now and all this stuff, and it's kind of cool. I think past recessions, and I'm not a financial person or anything, but past recessions, this area was always the last to be affected, and it usually started getting effective as things were coming out and we were moving back. But now um, there's a lot of people looking for work. I know because I'm looking for people, but there's not a great quality of worker. But I talked to some uh, contractors especially, cause that, and that's kind of the lifeblood here, contractors remodeling and, and doing that. That's, there's no really big industry anymore uh, since uh, Waverly Press and Black & Decker are gone. But these, I go, how are you doing? They go, oh, we're busy as can be, can't have enough. I go, wow, that's great. He goes, yeah, but it's me and my son and, and his, his buddy, and I used to have 20 guys. So they're staying busy and they're doing okay, but there's 15 people that don't have a job anymore, you know, and that's the hard uh, part. I think it's a societal change that uh, the work ethic is, is suffering. Um, the quality of, I mean, everywhere you go, the quality of work and service and all that is really suffering. And, um, you know, there, there's a lot of good people out there still, and there's a lot of hard workers out there. I'm lucky to have several of them working for me, um, but it's just, it's hard to find new people um, that have that desire and really want to want to work. I mean, I got my first job when I was 13, and you know, my dad and I were picking strawberries in the morning, in the afternoon I had a job, and I was opening and closing a gas station with the key at 13 years old, you know, and of course that was 1966, but that, you know, that was a different world, you know, and... Now there's some 30-year-olds I wouldn't trust with the key to this building. But I, have, I have a lot of friends who are veterans. I had some friends back to Vietnam times that didn't make it, and 
and a lot of friends who were severely affected by what they went through. And being with the Elks, again, we're, we're very veteran-oriented, and I've met a lot, a lot of veterans over the years. And, and then I see that, that people don't have respect for them. The country, a lot of people just don't have any respect for them. You know, and, and irregardless of what do you think about war or any of that stuff, these people were willing to die for you and me. Irregardless, whether they were a little guy on a boat, or whether they were a guy flying an airplane, or whether they were a guy guarding up, who knows what. You know, they were willing, like that, to give their life for the other people in their country. So they deserve some credit for that.